This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Okay, uh, let me tell you just what's been happening uh, lately, or what has happened lately. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, on the Friday live stream, um, someone asked me, you know, what do you think of the Harley Benton HB35, their semi-acoustic guitar? And I said, yeah, great guitars, I used to have one. And then, of course, well, if it was a good guitar, why did you get rid of it? And I said, well, you know, cutting a long story short, um, our dog got ill. Uh, he had a pretty bad bout of pancreatitis. He's had two of them now. But anyway, the first time he had it, um, there was a big vet's bill. I mean, he's insured, but, uh, you know, there was a an excess to pay on the insurance. And I had to sell a couple of bits and pieces to pay that. And one of the things that went was the Harley Benton HB35. And, you know, there we go. And then the conversation moved on and I never thought any more about it. Uh, and as I said, uh, this was on the Friday live stream and um, I was having a beer. And then after the Friday live stream, I had a few more beers. And then I woke up on the Saturday morning and um, checking my email through slightly hungover eyes. And um, I saw confirmation of your order from Toman. I thought, oh, she's going to kill me. I've bought another guitar when I was drunk. Um, but no, it turns out uh, a chap called Bob, uh, who's a subscriber to this channel, regular viewer, uh, had watched the live stream and, um, you know, he emailed me and said, I was so touched by the fact that you sold a guitar to pay for your dog's vet's bills. I've bought you a replacement. And, excuse me, here it is. This isn't just the Harley Benton HB35. This is the HB35 Plus, and he didn't just buy me the HB35 Plus, an upgraded model, which has a nicer top and, you know, kind of you've got the single coil switching on the pickups and stuff. But he also bought me a nice kind of hard case to go with it, you know, kind of not just a gig bag, a proper hard shell case. And I've got to tell you, I am incredibly moved by that. I, it's It's... It's so easy to turn on the television or the radio or read a newspaper now and hear about all of the nastiness that's in the world that something like this just really does restore your faith in humanity a little bit. Well, quite a lot, actually. So, Bob, if you're watching this video, and I suspect you probably are, thank you, thank you, thank you for this. Um, I'm going to tell you what plans I've got for this guitar right after we've put it to work. And as this is a Saturday, then, as you know, I always put up a bit of a solo that I've played on a Saturday. And this week it features this guitar. And this um, sort of came from uh, a, a question from one of my students, which was, um, he's in a band, um, although they're not gigging much at the moment, obviously. Um, but their rhythm guitarist has left. It's a, it's a blues band and the rhythm guitarist, because of work commitments and stuff, can't really um, get... Uh, you know can't really find the time to be in a band anymore uh, so he was saying how can I um, still kind of play solos when there's no chords going on underneath well how can I kind of keep that um, stop it from sounding empty when uh, there are no chords going on underneath the solo when it's just bass and drums you know essentially playing lead guitar in a three-piece band well, I'll tell you what, here's exactly how I would deal with it. You'll hear the solo, then you'll hear the, um, the explanation of what I was doing.
Okay then, uh, under normal circumstances, which by that I mean if there's a rhythm guitarist or keyboard player giving you some chords to play over, you get something a little bit like this graphic here, where at the bottom of the pile, harmonically speaking, there is a bass line following the chord sequence, then sitting on top of that, you've got the chords, and then sitting on top of that, you've got your lead guitar part, which is probably going to be based around a pentatonic scale. <laughs> Or maybe a blues scale. And that works pretty well. Um, but the problem is, uh, if that rhythm guitarist isn't there, uh, kind of making that connection between the lead guitar part and the bass line, as you can see, there's nothing connecting the two but empty space. And it can sound a little bit, well, empty as a result. So what we need to do is reconnect the lead guitar part to the bass line. And we do that by suggesting the chord sequence in the lead guitar part. Now, the blues that we're dealing with here is a blues in the key of A, which means that there is an A7 chord, a D7 chord, and an E7 chord like that. So what we're going to do is, as you would normally expect to do in a blues situation, uh, we're going to be playing the A minor pentatonic, because it's essentially a blues in A. So we're going to have lots of licks that are based, ar based around this shape here. And that's going to be the bedrock of what we're doing. And anytime there's an A7 chord going on, in, in the background, or any time where there should be an A7 chord going on in the background, okay, where that A7 chord would be if there was a rhythm guitarist there, we're going to suggest the A7 chord by using the A major pentatonic. And get licks maybe like this. That kind of thing. But in order to give it that bluesy kind of snarl, we also need to mix that A major pentatonic in with some of the A minor pentatonic. So you can start getting licks that combine this shape, A minor with this shape, A major. So you might get... that and that will be suggestive enough of the a7 chord in a bluesy kind of way that it kind of fills that gap that's uh, kind of been created by the lack of a rhythm guitar part so over the a7 chord play or where the a7 chord would be play a major pentatonic plus the bedrock scale of a minor then when we go to uh, where the d7 chord would be again we're going to keep on using a minor pentatonic but we're also going to use D major pentatonic because we're kind of in the territory that is owned by uh, a D7 chord, which is essentially a D major chord um, in this context. So D major pentatonic looks like this. So you can get all kinds of licks that are based around that sort of shape. like that, and also we can mix that in, as I say, with the A minor pentatonic, and combine the two scales together to get licks that are a combination of both of them. That kind of thing. Uh, then, when we are heading towards or going into the territory that is owned by the E7 chord, we're going to use um, E major pentatonic. You know, and you can get all kinds of... licks like that coming out of an E major pentatonic. Uh, but we can also stoke up that uh, bluesiness by keeping uh, a few notes or just dropping a few notes in from the A minor pentatonic, which is the sort of bedrock minor pentatonic blues scale kind of thing over the top of that. So we're, we're combining E major pentatonic 
to fit the E7 chord, and A minor pentatonic, which gives the whole thing its bluesy kind of uh, sound. So, you know, that would result in licks that go... Like that, and again... By combining those two scales together into licks like that, you get something that is suggestive enough of the uh, E7 chord in that kind of blues context. Now, what I've done here is I've shown all of these examples within the context or around the context of the first position of A minor pentatonic. <laughs> But of course, there are four other positions of A minor pentatonic. There's this one. This one. This one. And this one. Like that. So what you need to be able to do is brush up, if necessary, on your pentatonic shapes. First of all, make sure you know all of those. And then be able to locate the A major pentatonic, the D major pentatonic, and the E major pentatonic in and around the context of each one of those patterns of A minor pentatonic. Uh, if that's something that you are maybe not confident in, then I'll just drop this into the conversation right now. I've done a course on this, uh, well, a couple of courses. There is uh, play more lead guitar the easy way, and there is uh, blues guitar beyond the pentatonic, both of which are available on Udemy. Links are in the description. So, you know, just, uh, just dropping that one in, just in case you're interested. So... Uh, this technique of mixing these different pentatonic scales together is, really speaking, uh, a massively useful way of playing blues lead guitar if you are playing guitar in a three-piece band. And when you stop playing the accompaniment part, stop playing the chords and launch into your solo, you do need, uh, usually, to kind of be able to create the sound of the chord sequence in some way or suggest it via your lead guitar parts. And this is how you can do it. So there you go, hopefully that made um, a bit of sense, and as I said, there are a couple of courses uh, that I've got on sale down there in the description box that you can uh, that you can just take a look at in order to um, brush up on the necessary pentatonic knowledge. Incidentally, uh, if you were, um, as I was, uh, quite impressed by the tone of that guitar, a large part of that was this pedal here, this Harley Benton British sound, which was giving a an almost kind of blues breaker era Clapton kind of t uh, sound to it, I thought. You know, it's, it's it really had that kind of fat, early JTM 45 or blues breaker kind of uh, tone dialed in on that pedal. Really great pedal, and you can win it. Uh, there's a link to the, um, to the contest that I'm running. That's also downstairs in the description. So go and watch that video, and I explain all about the contest that's going on. And, you know, you can win yourself a rather good-sounding little uh, Harley Benton British tone pedal. Fantastic piece of kit. Now, on to the guitar. Let's go and grab that again. Here we we go here it is oh before we move on i will just say that um that uh solo there and that clip that uh when i'm explaining the pentatonic skills and everything uh that is all up on my uh, patreon page there's the address link in the description um that's up there on my patreon page or it will be as soon as i've had time to tab it out um hopefully it'll be up before this video hits youtube but if it isn't just give me a, a day or so and the tab will be up there along with the jam track and that clip there special little uh, thank you to all my patreon supporters uh, for all the support that they're giving me and it's only three dollars a month so you know loads of extra resources for these youtube videos so check it out anyway this guitar as you know i've had a really uh, big stroke of uh, good fortune lately where um dan from scott guitars uh, a, a small boutique artisan luthier guitar builder is building me my signature model guitar um that will be uh, hopefully ready uh, pretty soon so 
I feel like I've already had a big stroke of good luck and it feels the only the right thing to do to pass this stroke of good luck and good fortune on. So what I'm going to do is, uh, after I've done a full review of this guitar, uh, which will be going up on Tuesday, I think, after I've done the full review of this, uh, this guitar will, and the case and everything, will be going to Zoe's Place Baby Hospice for them to raise a bit of funds from. Uh, if you don't know about Zoe's Place, it's a charity in Middlesbrough which provides palliative, respite and end-of-life care to children under five with terminal illnesses. I've supported them on this channel for a while now and um, yes, I think they can um, you know, do some good with this and you know, just put it in one of their charity shops or hold an auction or something and uh, raise a few quid and you know, do some good with it. So that's what's going to be happening with this guitar. I've spoken to Bob about it and he's completely fine with that. He's thrilled that he's going to be helping uh, such a good cause and once again bob thank you thank you so much your generosity is really really touching thank you again and that's pretty much all i've got for you today folks hope you've enjo enjoyed the video found it useful informative and maybe a little bit inspiring and if you have please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not give me a like while you're at it and as i say if you want to support the channel all the links are in the description thank you so much if you're doing anything like that to keep me help me keep the lights on around here and thank you in advance if you're thinking about doing it and with that i'll bid you all a good day and say look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now